Okay, we're at the front of the house. This is the water meter. It's in the parkway sidewalk. Um, that's the dial. Inside the dial, you see a little sprocket right there. It's called a cheater wheel, cheater paddle, or a cheater wheel. If there is a leak on the supply side, that little dial will move. And if you can't find where the leak is, then it's someplace that you can't see. So. Inside the yard, as it should be, this is the lawn sprinkler system. This is the shutoff valve for the whole system. You got a bleed valve right there. These are the uh, isolation valves so that you can actually work on the valve. Now the problem with these valves, okay, is that this valve should be on this side of the backflow prevention device. So that way you could turn this valve, if it were over here, you could turn it off and remove the check valve and replace it. As it is now, you have to turn off the water to the whole house, which probably isn't that horrible of a thing. The floor should be excavated better and lined with gravel to keep dust and dirt from washing in like it has. And then these little bleed valves, they should all have little rubber boots on them. We're supposed to service these guys every year and nobody does that I get that now some of the sidewalk has settled right in here so this curb it could be a trip hazard walking up we're gonna go diagonally across the house but at the front of the house remember that the water meters behind me these are your double clean outs for the sewer system right here in the front yard. I've been made privy that this house has experienced some foundation repair. Okay, if the retaining wall height is less than, is more than twice its height away from the structure, then this little planter box retaining wall shouldn't have any effect on the foundation performance. Basically, it's a 45 degree angle. So if you run out of 45 before you get to the house, then, then that's an acceptable application. Trees shouldn't be closer than 25 feet to a slab foundation. I understand these are crepe myrtles, they have very shallow roots, but that's just a rule of thumb. Okay, house faces north. This is a clean out. We're on the west side. This is a clean out for the master bathroom right here next to the fence. Bushes shouldn't be so close to the house. We have soffit vents, and if you notice, the soffit vents have been painted. Okay, so they don't breathe like they should. These vents, I mean, you could clean them, I guess, but these vents, okay, they should probably all be replaced when they replace the roof, which I'm, it's my understanding that the roof is to be replaced. The windows are single pane aluminum frame, okay? They're not very energy efficient. They were fine the day the house was built. Most of the houses over here, including mine, are single pane aluminum frame. But that doesn't make my house energy efficient. My house isn't even for sale. We're coming along here. And there's some rodent traps in the flower bed. Um, we have some erosion along the west side of the house. So we've got that, and one thing that I'm not noticing, two things I'm not noticing along this wall, is uh, we don't have weep holes around the perimeter and there are no expansion control joints. One thing I haven't, oh there we go, stair step crack between the brick and mortar. This is the middle bedroom right here by the condensing unit. Okay, this is the condensing unit. It's 11 years old, it's 13 sear, it's three ton carrier. Okay, these are called Schrader valves, service valves for the refrigerant. 90% of your refrigerant leaks happen at these valves, and the caps are missing. The caps should be there. And like I said, it's 3 to C, 36, uh, 3 tons, 11 years old. They last about 14. We engineered on paper to last 20. Mine's about 19, but 
after 14 years this unit's pretty much done everything that you would expect it to do it does have the r410 refrigerant in it which is which is a good thing this is electric service disconnect box it's all hooked up i'll place the cover back on it here in a minute this is the closest water faucet to the meter that i found so far and i had turned the water off because but here we got a little over 80 psi a little over 80 psi right there okay 80 is the max saved by the bell 800 you know that's a good call all right more erosion we've got a little bit right there you can see in here let's see what is this we have oh that's just the plastic okay getting ahead of myself some of the rain gutters divert water beneath the ground again it's my understanding the roof covering and the rain gutter system is to moving on along I can see a little bit of a different hue right in here there's been a little bit of mortar repairs coming along wood mold I'm back I'm back to the clean outs Wood mulch beneath the drip lines. Okay, it's conducive to wood destroying insects. I have, I'm a certified pest control applicator in Texas. I can make comments like that. Okay, coming around here to this front porch, this is GSCI protected. That's a weather cover. Okay, but right around here we have these little holes, and they doctored that one up really good. And there's some on the patio too. I've, 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 there you go. I see little holes like that. We know that the structure has been treated for termites. It's the only reason to have those holes like that around the perimeter is subterranean termite treatment. Okay, we don't know when it was treated, we don't know who treated it, and we do not know what it was treated with. Coming along, all these, and these are called glazing strips. All right, these glazing strips are giving up the ghost. These windows are old, they're probably it's reasonable to assume that these windows are original to the structure. So, you know, it's time to start doing some budgeting. There's been a little bit of repair inside of there. So we'll just kind of come on along here. Ah, uh, there's one that was closer. I'm still going to go with that. If we have high water pressure on the other one, definitely that, that water pressure is not going to be any less. Okay. And we don't have vacuum breaker. That's a freeze. And some of the newer ones have integrated vacuum breakers, but... Um, so far the exterior faucets do not have vacuum breakers. I'm going to jump around a little bit more back to the lawn sprinkler system. The spray head should not be closer to the structure than 12 inches. Okay, these screens showing signs of wear. They are. Okay, moving on along here. That was the north side, this is the east side. You can see how the neighbor's yard slopes down towards this house. Now this house has a swale, okay because if you look over here you see how this yard moves down it's kind of like we have a, a little trench of a gully that's measured through here and that's a good thing that you want that so um, but you know in times of heavy rain just know that there's going to be a, a an influx there's going to be a lot of water coming down from this direction I'm still looking for some cracks I'm not seeing very many this is a clean out for the kitchen Okay, we're over on the east side. That's the kitchen window there. Uh, some more clogged soffit vents. Moving on along, that's the dining area. Actually, that's the breakfast area. Moving on along. This is the den area. We have some stair step cracks between the brick and mortar here in the den area. Coming on along, stair step cracks between the brick and mortar uh, underneath the. Um, this is the laundry vent, okay? And it's. the flap is open. Flap, actually, the flap is missing. This is where the gas comes into the house on the east side of the garage. And this is where you shut the gas off, the meters out in the garage. And we have another faucet over here. Alright, it doesn't have a vacuum breaker either. 
And this is the same on both sides. I didn't call this out when I was over there, but I remember seeing it near the condensing unit. All right, but this is the temperature pressure relief valve drain line for the water heater. This is the garage water heater, the east water heater, and on the west side of the house, it'd be the closet water heater. And um, they're too high. They should not. They should not discharge higher from the ground than six inches. And then the electric meter is on this side of the house. Okay, you should have a gap underneath here, which you do, but the sides should have been sealed and caulked. Behind the bird's nest there, they should have been sealed and caulked. This is the electric meter on the east side of the house. What I'm not seeing, okay, is, yes I am. Okay, the grounding rod is properly buried, that's good. But this is the electric conduit, power coming from the city to the house, and uh, that's loose right there. So that should be sealed. Uh, uh, water, wider, a longer sleeve can be put on there and put that back together. The, the foundation is moved, it heaved up a little bit, and it's pulled itself. You can tell where it used to fit right there with that line. Okay, coming on along. Looking for more cracks, not really seeing any more cracks. Okay, but what I am seeing, okay, we've got some soffit damage behind the rain gutter. This is the southeast corner of the garage. Um, I'll see if I find any more. I've got to take some still images. So, you know, there's all that. There's been some repair. Okay, these are called soldier bricks. These are called sailor bricks because it's got boats sailing across the ocean. These are soldiers marching across a bridge, I guess. But we've got a little bit of separation right there with that soldier brick. The vertical casement wall trim. It allows water to wick up into the wood. You can see there's some wood damage right in there where that's been happening and they've been painting it and sealing it. There should be a gap there to help prevent that. This is the garage door gasket. It's torn right here. Let's see what we got. Bear with me. Hang on. Don't go anywhere. I got gotcha. you. Hang on, I'll save you. I will. Hang on. Okay, at least you could hear it. The garage door raised pretty well and the garage door is in, in pretty good shape. Okay, but speaking of the garage door, these optic sensors are not supposed to be farther from the floor than six inches and they're not. Uh, these electric control cables, they're supposed to be secured with insulated staples and they're not. So it's okay, the optic sensors are low enough, but these wires should have been sealed. There should be spring tension, pinch, safety notices on each bottom corner of the door, and there is not. There should be a pull handle inside the door, preferably in the center of the door, and on the exterior as well. A lot of people hate that, I do. But there are not pull handles. In fact, there are not um, child safety notices posted on this door spring. Wait a minute. For your family safety, right there is a child safety notice. That's a pretty good thing. Okay. Come along here. This door is not GFCI protected. It was not required when the structure was built. One of the courtesy lights. This courtesy light works. This courtesy light does not work. And then again, it's not GFCI protected. Coming on along here. This is the electric service panel on the inside of the east side of the garage. Okay, and we do not have a rating on this. I won't be able to rate this. I'm going to say 150. It might be 200, but the manufacturer's label is not present. Okay, the manufacturer's label has been removed. So that's at least it's decently, at least it was decently labeled right there. Then over here. this 50 amp breaker. Ah, excuse me, that's a 60 amp breaker. This is the breaker for the condensing unit, condensing unit and it's oversized. This white hot should have been wrapped in black tape. Okay, then coming on along here, these wires should not be touching the panel cover. Coming along here, we should not have uh, paint inside the panel. Um, there should be a notice Uh, there shouldn't be a gap more than an eighth of an inch around the service panel. The 
it's okay that the neutrals and grounds share that bus bar back there. It's okay that the grounds are double lugged, meaning two wires to one screw. It's not okay that some of these neutrals are sharing a ground because now that neutral has been double lugged and neutrals should not be double lugged. There should be an antioxidant paste on these and there should be protective booties on these. Um, we have right here, we have an open knockout right up there where this uh, wires are coming through. That should, the connector should have been installed inside of there. Um, and that's uh, eighth inch. That's it, that's it, that's it. Um, where is the neutral? Come on, show my ineptitude. Okay, the neutral coming into the house, that neutral right there should be wrapped with white tape. That should be wrapped with black tape. That should be wrapped with white tape. If somebody's in this box and does not recognize those wires, they have no business in this box, but that's what those wires are there for. It's a safety precaution. This is one of the water heaters. These water heaters are pretty much identical. It installed at the same time in 2009. Okay, it's 2020. Okay, it's November 19. So these water heaters are nine years old. And they're engineered, they're, they last about 10. They last about 10. These water heaters are old and then um, back when the structure was built, we used to put screens on the ceilings in the mechanical closets and we did no longer do that because insulation falls on those screens and it blocks it. Um, we definitely have some heat issues over here. See all the heat and the tarnishing? Look at the paint peeling over there. Okay, this is a 40 gallon water heater. Both of the water heaters are nine years old. Both of the water heaters are 40 gallons. Neither of the well, both of the water heaters have electronic ignition. I do not see a an expansion tank, and we have over 80 psi coming to the house. Neither of the water heaters have sediment traps for the gas lines where they come in. Neither water heater has safety pans. Both of the water heaters T and P drain lines discharge too high from the ground. This flexible, a lot of a lot of people are under the impression that this flexible is against code and actually it's not. There's not a code that addresses that. There's a code that addresses this fitting that makes it you able to install this. This is the code violation right here. Okay, this this valve should not be threaded because then you can cap it off. This valve should be insulated. Insulation should be closer to the tops. I think I pretty much got, I don't know, safety pan. There's the care and use manual right there. Okay, the garage does not have GFCI protection. Okay, we have one GFCI here and this controls the exterior, some of the exterior, the front porch, and one of the back porches, and then it also controls the bathrooms. Uh, again, we wouldn't do that today, but that was acceptable during the day. That's the way we did it. This is the door opener button. It should not be closer to the floor than five feet so that little prying kids' hands can't get to that. And then, of course, oh, that's an insulated staple. Um, there should be a safety notice posted next to this door switch. This door should have a self-closing spring on it, okay, so that it always closes. Um, this ladder, the rails do not extend properly. We go up here, we got a lot of storage already looked up there. There's just a lot of storage. We got plywood roof decking over lath. At one time, this is, was a wood. This is the lawn sprinkler system, okay? This is the lawn sprinkler system, and they've got this cord running all over here. Let's see what I'm finding here. To a receptacle outlet behind here. And right there on that cord, haha. <laughs> you see that it's been improperly spliced. Uh, improper electric junctions going to that. That's a low voltage, still wrong. Okay, we have instructions, but the stations are not labeled. Stations are not labeled. The does not extend properly. No GFCI there. Too close. Keep dropping those cards. Okay. Magic beans. This is the fence. This is the only fence I'm aware of to the backyard. It comes over by the... And then we're coming on along here. Lawn sprinkler heads should not be closer than 12 inches. Um, mulch too close to the house. When they have these boards like this, these horizontal trim boards at the bottom of the paneling, that's not the way it was originally installed. 
All right. So what's happened here is there's been some wood damage behind there, and they came along and they made this real nice little fix. And I did it in my house. These paving stones might not be very um, accommodating to handicapable people, um, chairs and walkers and things like that. Um, coming on along here, this is what the siding should have looked like. Okay. So we have the original siding here, and then of course so now we see where they made the uh, improvements. And there's more drill holes, so the back porch has been treated as well. That receptacle outlet and that receptacle outlet are not GFCI protected. Okay, and we're missing some screens here. Are those fixed windows? No, they're articulate. Okay, so we're missing some screens. Coming along here, this, like the front porch, this is GFCI protected. And coming on along, trees too close. Coming on along is another clean out for the master bathroom. This is the kick out for the master bathtub right here. Wood mulch. Bushes too close to the house. And that's that's a pretty long-winded tour.